to the Off Grid family. Today I'd like to start off just with an apology. I'm really sorry that my recording schedule has gone out the window. Um, not only did I have to change my laser tube, I've also had to fix my computer and various other things. It's been like a month of things breaking and me having to fix them and then one thing after another. Sort of like a domino effect. But hopefully my schedule's back to working now. Fingers crossed that is. Um, but also, could you please like and subscribe if you're not subscribed? Only about 1-2% to of people are actually subscribed. By now I'd be on at over 100,000 subs if everyone who watched my videos were subscribed. In fact, it'd be 1.4 million, but we won't go there. Okay, so today we'll be changing the laser tube, changing the water out, doing a few bits and bobs, um, and just getting the laser back up and running. It's been a pain in the bum because I'd already ordered a new laser tube because I knew this one was sort of, there was a few inconsistencies with it. Um, but with the coronavirus and with us c coming away from the EU, I've had all sorts of problems getting the one that I ordered into the country, so I had to order another one and then wait for it, which was a pain. The other one's now arrived, so let's get it in the laser. First of all, with anything that I'm fixing, especially something like this, or like a motor or an engine of some kind, I always like to give it a clean, because sometimes once you've cleaned it, you notice other things that are wrong, or sometimes you find the reason that the thing went wrong in the first place. So let's get all nice and crispy clean, and then we'll go to the next step. Right, so the first thing I'd like to do is actually check the laser tube to see if there's any uh, anything noticeable. Like I, One of the things I think it could have been is maybe if it's got a bit of dirt on it, possibly. So, let's move this out of the way, carefully. And we're going to unscrew these. Well, that's the right size. <clears throat> this thing's got loads and loads of heads for it, which is awesome, but it's never right and it always takes me ages to find, but at that time, just fate. Now, I wouldn't normally just do one side, but the other side's going to be too far for me to get to, so such is life. Okay. Now, I will, will warn you that if this has got had any power to it recently, you could get quite a nasty shock from it, but I'm not unplugging anything. Um, I'm not going to be touching any of this end. I just literally would like to look to see if there's anything blocking this end or if any um, stains or anything's on it. That's all I want to see, really. Can't see anything. I'm going to give it a quick clean anyway and see if anything comes off. No, as I thought, it is clear, I just need a new tube. Okay, so I'm just going to cut all the zip ties and remove all the piping so we can get this laser tube completely out. Now here, obviously, I would have done this at the beginning had I needed to. Here and at the other end is the cathode and anode. You want to discharge this side so you don't get a nasty shock. Now I've already done all that, but there's plenty of videos that show you how. Right, so once you've discharged the positive side, just pull it off and there should be some silicone holding it quite tight, but it should come off relatively easily, just be careful. Um, and that way you can keep the sheath that, come, that holds the silicone in as well. Also then, be very careful putting the next, the, the brand new tube in because you really don't want to accidentally chip that or smash it. 
They don't always come with it, but sometimes you'll find that they've got this rubber kind of thing. Make sure you slide that on very, very gently. You can use a tiny bit of dish soap if needed, but you can just squeeze them on without you know, much problems. Just be careful not to squeeze the tube too hard. You do not want to smash this. Okay, first things first, before you do anything, make sure that this has not got any more na nasty magic in it. So you want to make sure you've touched it to ground and you've made sure there is no chance of electric shock, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to disconnect all of that. Oh, that's happy days. Actually looks really, really clean compared to some of the ones I've done. A guy asked me the other day um, about soldering this to here. Um, he said that he didn't have any silicone and he just wanted to do it as quick as possible. Do not ever use um, a soldering iron near your laser tube because you just don't know how much heat it can take. You may end up just cracking the, the tube and they're not cheap enough to be able to just throw away and start again. Um, so yeah, I'd just wrap it around and get your silicone. Right, I'd like to now connect the tubes. And um, obviously you saw me taking them off, I had to pick them off quite hard, right? You want to use some sort of um, lubricant to get them on, but you want to make sure, because these are silicone tubing, you want to make sure that it is not anything that's going to break down the silicone over time. Um, my advice to you is use dish soap of some kind, and you that's, that's even too much to be honest. I was going to say you need a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but it's literally just a smear on your finger and do it around the tube just to give the tube some, some uh, lubrication and also get it off your finger there's nothing worse than trying to get the tube back in if you've got slippery fingers and as you'll see it slips on really really easily what I'll do is on the other one I'll put it on without well I'll try to put it on without putting any lubrication on just to show you Now instantly you can see I'm trying to fight against it and I, I can get on actually. Um, this one isn't so, oh, it's still it's still binding up, no. I use a little bit of dish soap even so. I think if, with a little bit of pushing I could have got that one on. Um, but I'd rather use this. It's a lot, lot, lot easier. Just the tiniest bit and you're sorted. There you go. Now we do the connections. Now where are we having the piping? That's correct, yeah. I'm just trying to work out where the wiring needs to go. So once I put this on, I don't want to have to take it back off again. Okay, so all I've done is I've wrapped it around quite tight. And now it's time for the silicone. This here is the silicone that comes in it, and that's what I'm gonna use. And I'm also reusing this, as I said. So I'm going to fill this up. Really careful with this stuff, it goes everywhere otherwise. It's already trying to attack me. Right. And now, can I get this on film? and just leave it. Okay, I'm gonna do the other side and I'll be back. Okay, that's both of them stuck down and I'm just gonna leave them to dry. Okay, so we're gonna leave the silicone to cure overnight. Is it cure or dry? Not sure, but anyway. Um, basically, it can take between 48 and 72 hours, but within 12-ish hours, it will be able to be handled without it just falling apart like glue. Now what you want to do is screw down the tube, make sure it's aligned as well as you can with the actual mirror 
and tighten it evenly so that it's actually straight and level and do not over tighten. Next, I want to test the water to make sure it's pumping through okay. And you know, you don't want to get it all ready, get it ready to do a laser cut and then find out that it's actually, the water's not going through and you know, you cause it to blow again immediately. Right, now we're gonna do a few little tests just to make sure that the power's going where it should be and the laser's going where it should be. If this all works out, happy days. Right, the water is already looking nasty and it hasn't actually been that long since I did it. So I'm gonna give it a nice clean out and we're gonna put a few chemicals in it to hopefully avoid other things growing in it. Look how dirty that is down there. And this has only been eight months, no, not even that, six months of use. So um, basically clean that out as best you can because it's all like a sludge and that is not good for your pump or for your uh, laser tube. Um, and this time I'm gonna use some other stuff to go in it and I'll show you what it is in a minute. Right, I've sprayed it with some antibacterial spray and I'm just going to wipe it all out. Right, I'm using 10 litres of deionized water. You use deionized water because it doesn't conduct electricity as well as um, just like normal water. Hopefully it should have less particles in for the electricity to jump through and kill you. Um, you know, and um, I've got Prestone coolant and antifreeze. Um, this stuff will stop it freezing in the lines, etc., etc. It's designed for cars. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but I should be able to use, what's this, one litre. I'm going to use all of this. Am I? I'll come back to you with the ratios I'm using in a sec. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 10 litres of deionized water to 1 litre of the coolant. On the website it says you want to use it at a 2 to 1 ratio, um, a 1 to 2 ratio, meaning for every litre of this you could have 2 litres of your deionized water. But that's for engines and coolant systems and that's down to minus 16 degrees. Obviously I never want my water to go that low. Um, we're looking at about 15 degrees plus 15 degrees C. Turn it sideways like that, you should get less splashing than if you have it this way because the air is not trying to get out as fast. Just a little tip. Right, one thing, I've decided to only use half of this just because it's so damn expensive, I can't afford to use it all and then only have needed half. So I'm going to put half in, see what it's like, run it for a few days. If I need the full lot, I can put it in, but I can't obviously take it out if I put too much in. So I will just put half in. This stuff looks like my pee after drinking too many energy drinks. Okay, we're about 200 mil over half, but that's fine. Okay, so there you go. It's all done and dusted and it's working fine. I hope that helped some of you. Um, I will, as I say, be getting back to my regular recording schedule now. Um, as I say, loads of stuff went wrong and it was just a pain in the bum month. But hopefully it's all sorted now. Um, if you could do me a favour and like and subscribe, do all that algorithm rubbish, uh, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.